So uh, what we do is we look for situations where a business has lost its way, uh, where an otherwise great company with, in, a, in a business that we would define as one that has significant barriers to entry, that Warren Buffett would describe as having a moat around it, a business that is simple, predictable, generates cash, and we can be confident we'll be here 50 years from now. A good example is we own a stake in Canadian Pacific, which is a, a railroad in Canada. Um, and if you think about the railroad business, you know, it's, not, it's a business where they're not going to build a new one across the street. You, know, you can have, you know, absent some fairly dramatic changes in technology, you can be pretty comfortable that you know, goods will be shipped on rail for a very long time to come. So we, it's a business we can predict. We can think about it from a very long-term perspective. We can buy it at a price that's interesting. And in the case of CP, uh, this was the worst-run railroad in North America. It had the lowest profit margins. It was trading at the lowest valuation relative to earnings and had a very unhappy shareholder base, but there was nothing they could do about it because they were inherently, again, the, the biggest investors tend to be very passive. And we saw an opportunity, and the opportunity was if you could replace the worst CEO in, in uh, the railroad industry with the best CEO in the railroad industry, a lot of money could be made. And we bought uh, first 12% of the stock and then another 2%, so about 14% of the stock. We recruited a guy named Hunter Harrison, who is uh, widely considered the best railroad executive of all time, you know, certainly in North America. He had retired at 65. He was 66 and a half. He had signed a two-year non-compete with his employer, and I think the biggest mistake they made was a two-year non-compete, because he was running the, uh, the other Canadian railroad, Canadian National. And uh, we hired him as a consultant. He helped us study the railroad, and he had plenty of fire in his belly. And we said, look, would you be interested in a day job? And he said, let me check with my wife. And she said, you know what? It's time to get you out of the house again. And, uh, my wife says that all the time. <laughs> And, and uh, we recruited them, and then we had to simply put them in place. Now, the problem was Canadian Pacific has one of the most sort of esteemed and illustrious boards in Canada, at least at the time, and it was the former head of the Royal Bank of Canada, the former CEO of Suncor Energy, the former head of the steel business. You know, it was a very, very important board, and um, they didn't like the idea that this idea was coming from outside the company, so they said no. Um, so we went to the shareholders, and we ran an election, you know, a proxy contest. We put up seven directors for uh, seven seats on a 13-seat board, uh, and the shareholders voted with us 90% uh, of the time and voted against the other guys, uh, and they got between 3 and 11% of the vote. We put our directors on. Uh, we did a review of the best CEOs in the world. Turns out the guy we identified was the best guy. Uh, we put him in a CEO. That was 16 months ago, uh, and it's almost the most profitable railroad in North America after 16 months. That's how quick this guy goes to work. Stock's gone from 46 uh, to $151 a share. It's, you know, a little under $8 billion market cap to a $25 billion market cap. And that's kind of the perfect example. Now, it doesn't always work that way. 